So my boy Wolfie recently made a video ranking all of the Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. At the very bottom, we are going to find ourselves in the F tier, or what I like to call the homies. I took it upon myself to try to build a team consisting of only Pokemon ranked in the F tier and see how they would do. I have now assembled what could be the most powerful Pokemon squad of all time, and these boys are ready for some action. Of course, Wolf's List is ranking in the mindset of VGC, however, I think that these Pokemon can actually be pretty good in a 6v6 singles meta, and I just really like to try to get bad Pokemon to do stuff. As always, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit that button, I'm well on my way to 300k, and I've got a lot more videos where this came from and some big ideas coming this year. Plus, only like half the people who watch these videos are subscribed, so yeah, go ahead and help me out, or don't, I mean that's fine too. Anyway. Let's go ahead and get ourselves into the match here. So, I decided to lead off with the Spidops, the boy Weevil Underwood coming out here looking weird and being annoying. So here's the thing about my good friend Spidops. This thing goes down quicker than a fat kid on a seesaw, and I need to try to just get some value out of this thing while I can. Essentially, this thing is kind of built to get some hazards up, potentially sucker punches for later. Uh, but for now, I'm figuring, you know, Sticky Web looks actually really nice against this team. Uh, so he actually ends up going for the Thunderbolt there. The reason why he doesn't go for the Flamethrower is because I do have the Flashfire Houndoom in the back. So that's a heads up play. However, I'm just Focus Sash anyway, just to guarantee I can at least get one of my hazards up. Um, but now I don't really have anything that wants to switch into this. So I essentially just go for the Sucker Punch here, try to get as much chip as possible uh, to be able to try to get a revenge kill on this thing. So of course, you know, Spidops goes down, but I did at least get my Sticky Web up and I got like 30% on an Electros. So hey, that's certainly something. So now I'm sitting here down six to five, but I do get a switch into whatever I want. So I decide to go into the Tic Tac. Electros with his open ass mouth over here looking like he could use a breath mint. And the Choice Band Wug Trio is likely gonna be able to grab the KO here with the liquidation. Uh, I believe it actually does around 65% uh, with a liquidation. So I'm thinking it's a kill. I actually end up grabbing a critical hit, uh, which likely did not matter, but it was actually super close there. So important to note, Spidops came through with that Sucker Punch. I, I definitely needed that little bit of chip damage. Um, but Electros going down is great because that's a super annoying Pokemon for me to deal with. It has no weaknesses, things a fucking superhero, and he's gone. So now we're going to see the Oink alone come in. And what I really do not want to happen is for this thing to start setting up with Stuffed Cheeks, get some defense boosts, and me not be able to do too much with a liquidation. So I decided to actually switch right into Ursaring here. The reason for this is because I know I can take one attack from this thing guaranteed and upon switching in I'll actually activate my flame orb uh, which gives me a burn activating my guts and then it's just fuck it is rampage in time for the gummy dude. Now it looks like he's named gummy because he looks like a lime flavored gummy bear. Wrong. He's gummy because the guy ain't got no teeth and all he knows how to do is throw hands. So there may have never been a worse time to be an oink alone because a facade does a ton of damage and that is actually just a nice little one hit KO. Uh, depending on what type of oink alone that was, it potentially could have lived, uh, but the gummy bear is too damn strong. The reason why I wanted to run with the sticky web on this team is kind of specifically for this thing. Uh, if it has the speed advantage on stuff, there's not a lot that wants to take a facade. The one thing he does have on his team that can take a facade is this colossal. Now, I figure I have the earthquake for the coverage for this exact situation, but I also know that he hasn't used his Terra yet, and if there's a time for him to use a Terra, it's probably right now. So, I just click the facade just because I know it's gonna do a lot of damage depending on what he Terra's into. He does end up going for the Terra, turns into the uh, bug type, uh, so this thing would have resisted both the close combat and the earthquake, but what it does not do is resist that boy's facade. Uh, so you get some little antennas going on, and the facade actually comes in clutch here. Not quite enough to take it out, but that is a very thick boy over there, so I'm totally fine with that. He actually ends up going for the heat crash, which surprisingly, I'm actually able to live and live through my burn recoil. Uh, as it turns out, this Earth Ring is about way thicker than I thought. I figured I was only like 300 pounds and Colossal's got to be like a thousand, but hey, we will definitely take it because now one more facade is going to take care of the Colossal. So the good news about that is mostly that he's now burnt his Terra and I don't have to worry about any crazy shenanigans and things, you know, going full crystal on me and changing their types. So that is amazing. And the best news is I actually have one more turn of burn damage left in me. Knocks me right down to 10 and it looks like one more thing is taking a facade bear claw right to the dome. Uh, so he actually ends up going into the Bananasaur. Shout out to the dude for using the Tropius. This thing is an absolute amazing Pokemon and Game Freak hates because they never give this thing any love. But I go for the facade here, but he actually just has the protect. So there's truly never been a better time to, to go for the protect there. Absolutely. I don't know why he's, his neck is straight up broken over those. Bananas are 
messing with this thing's posture. I don't know. But I do go down to the flame orb there, unfortunately. But we got a nice little mini rampage going uh, with the Ursa Ring, which is always fun to see because that Pokemon is super underrated. And he, he definitely has a spot on teams. So... Uh, getting a free switch into this is honestly fine because I do have the Scooby Doom, the Hound Doom, ready to come in. Potentially could try to get a nasty plot here. However, if this thing has any type of coverage like Earthquake, I'm in a bad spot. So I decided to instead go for the Will O Wisp. Uh, the reason for that is because if he decided to switch into like the Cloth or something like that, just in case, um, I could try to catch that. So turns out he actually stays in and just goes for the Leech Seed. So that tells me this thing is just like a Leech Seed Protect type of kind of defensive fella. But that shouldn't be much of a problem because with Colossal gone, uh, Houndoom actually has pretty free reign against the rest of the team here. So, Thing takes some burn damage and he takes some health from me and all that. But I just decided to go right for the flamethrower here. And it's looking like it's going to be some crispy bananas for breakfast today, boys. How do you like your bananas? Because they're served extra, extra crispy today. So the flamethrower is going to take care of the Tropius. And now he's down to two Pokemon left. He has the Clydeser and the Cloth in the back. Both of them could be relatively scary. Keep in mind, I do still have the Sticky Web up, so I'm faster no matter what. Decides to go into Crabzooka. Got two Crustaceans left, and it's a Lobster Boy comes in. I thought that was going to be Cloth, but no. The Cloth is still, you know, chilling safely in the Pokeball. But uh, Scooby Doom kind of did what it needed to do at this point, and I figured I could just go right for a Dark Pulse here. Potentially flinch, but also just do enough chip to where this thing will be easily taken care of by one of my mons in the back so i let scooby go down here i go for that hard hit and dark pulse uh, with that life orb gonna do a whole bunch of damage and he does show that he goes for the aura sphere so a lot of the time you will see these things as like a specs variant and so that's kind of what i'm expecting at this point and i've got a little trick under my sleeve and that is my homegirl thorny tits who does have the ghost terra type so my plan is knowing that the cloth is the last pokemon in the back i could actually just finish it off with the Cacturn, if I can play this correctly. So, if he's locked into the Aura Sphere, I know that if I go for the Terra uh, Ghost type, I can obviously resist that and get a free Swords Dance. And the reason why we want the free Swords Dance is mostly because that Cloth in the back, if I don't have the attack boost, it can actually live a Seed Bomb with like 20% of health left. And what I don't want to happen is to be swept by a Cloth in the late game, because that thing, uh, you know, could be annoying. So, just to guarantee that that Cloth is not going to be an issue, I go ahead and put a Ghost Hat on my head, and I dance with some swords. I'm looking extra pointy and thorny over here. You do not want to play games with this Cacturn. Uh, so he does go for the Aura Sphere there. He potentially could have had the Ice Beam, but regardless, being Ghost type, I would have lived it. And now I just throw the world's largest seeds at my dude's big meaty claws. They could actually they look like coconuts. Are coconuts technically seeds? I don't know, tropicalized Cacturn out here. But, uh, of course, I take some Life Orb damage, and his last Pokemon is going to be the Cloth Rave. Coming in, looking blue and shiny and cool as hell. I just love this Pokemon. But... With that sword stance and him getting all tied up in my sticky web over there, there's not much that this thing can do. So a, a seed bomb is going to do like 180% to this fella. Um, and so he actually ends up going for the Endure, which is actually a pretty common set on this thing. Because uh, as you're going to see, I hit him with the seed bomb. He's now going to live it with 1 HP. Uh, the super effective hit is going to actually activate his weakness policy. So it gives him a nice little attack boost. Plus, if you're familiar with the boy Cloth, this thing's ability is actually going to boost like every one of its stats so anger shell activates gives him another attack boost and this crab is about angry as shit you may not be able to tell because of his lifeless eyes but behind those eyes he's he's angry back there uh, luckily actually cacturn's about the best pokemon for me to have in this situation because i do of course have the priority with the sucker punch uh, so no matter what i decide to just go for the sucker punch because if he attacks he goes down so he decides to go for the endure just one more time just to check and see if i do have the sucker punch um, and I do, so I sucker punch the air there, but uh, as long as, you know, the battle's still going, he has to attack me, so the sucker punch is going to go through on this next turn, and that is going to be the end of the match there. So, that was a super fun game. I actually had a lot of fun with this team. Um, if you'd like to see me use this again, go ahead and let me know in the comments, or if you have any interesting Pokemon or sets uh, you would like to see me kind of feature on the channel, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I do read all the comments, and I do appreciate all the support. Uh, so, again, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.